you get the point, um, Ian, what I was asking the delegates? I mean, maybe I've got this wrong. Maybe you can tell me there is a big standout message coming from this conference to the country. If so, please help me. Well, I think if they get this right, tomorrow should be the moment when he categorises what he plans to do and hopefully does it in a simple way. I mean, I would simply say, from here until the next election, priority is to get government off people's backs, on their side, give them the freedoms that are necessary, get rid of the woke nonsense, cut taxes, get this economy moving, and get the boats stopped. OK, now we're told one of the big speeches will be about smoking, that nobody born after 2009 will be able to buy a packet of cigarettes. So I could be you know, in my mid-70s, going into, you know, the local corner shop, having to produce ID to prove I wasn't born before 2009. The point I'm making is, you say get government off the backs of people. We've had 13 years of government getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, and that's the whole point. Uh, now, listen, we put this in context. We've had the huge COVID attack, which cost us lots of money. We had to spend taxpayers' money, borrow money. And we've had this crisis over Ukraine, which, by the way, you see from this, I think we have to support them. So that is added to the cost burden. I understand all of that. But there are lots of things that we still do and spend money on in the bureaucracy of government that we don't need to do. You know, when I came in, we had to cut quite a lot of the cost of that, and we did so. And I think the government's got to do that to make way for what we consider returning people their money because we should only spend their money when we absolutely have to. So the key bit about all of this is, I, and this is where I think... I believe that Rishi Sunak is in the right place himself instinctively, which is, by and large, he is somebody that wants to get the costs down. He set himself a pledge to do that, but he has to articulate that in a way that says, I pledge to okay, you, so we will reduce the burden of taxation uh, before the next election. But the Chancellor... Get off your back. But hang on, Ian. The Chancellor, in a 15-minute, somewhat robotic, I thought, performance yesterday... Uh, very quick indeed. I mean, there was no hint of taxes being reduced. I don't, the thing is, I don't think they want to make a pledge to cut taxes, but they know that they have to reduce the burden of taxation. It's a fact of life. There's no escaping it. We have the highest tax rate that we've had since I, the Second I, World I War. I agree with all the of that. The government knows that. I agree that. with all of that. But they've is got it, to get a message it, shaped it, around it, getting off your back. What I'm hearing, reducing taxes. What I'm hearing in Manchester is, Suella Braverman, you, uh, telling us what's wrong. And we all know what's wrong. Yeah. yeah. But you've been in power for 13 I mean, years. I mean, do you agree with me that until Rishi's speech, as yet, there is no big standout message? Yeah, and that's the point about the message tomorrow. It is where we're going to be over the next 10, 12 months. So this speech is the most important speech he will make probably in his life. Yeah. Because this yeah, yeah. hinges where the government goes. And I think what we have to understand also from this speech, if I'm going to be a little bit uh, presumptive, is that I think people need to, he needs to let people in. Who is Rishi Sunak? I instinctively think that he is actually much more on the mould of reducing burdens, getting regulations down, and, and governing less, but giving people more responsibility. I think instinctively in all my conversations with him, that's where he is. Mm. He needs to let the public know that this is the guy that's going to yeah. try and make this yeah. better, easier, and safer for them. The vote <laughs> stuff is categorical. Well, about. I'm, I'm going to come back. We'll come, come back. We'll come back. No, no, we'll come back. Because <clears throat> at the end of those voxes I did, the woman said, clarity. I agree. She wants clarity. And this message of stability, I mean, it doesn't impress the general public at all. No. We need clarity in America. Now, Suella, who is very much cut in the IDS cloth politically, you know, ardent Brexiteer, um, free speech advocate, uh, many things that I would find, mm. you know, politically attractive about Suella. And yet, she did the same thing again today, didn't she? She told us what was wrong. People won't speak out because they fear being called racist. We've been hearing this stuff for years. Why, oh why, oh why, Ian, did she not address the ECHR? Every person in that hall expected this issue to be addressed. She didn't do it. Well, I'm hoping tomorrow a lot of this is being held back. Because you often know that prime ministers stop yeah, okay. uh, cabinet ministers from saying things because they want to say them in a context that develops the key message. So I think I'd be surprised if Rishi Sunak doesn't say something about this. It's one of the big elephants in the room. The truth is we have a pledge to stop the votes. He made that pledge categorically. I agree that it's got to happen. The only way you're going to stop that is to deter people from making that terribly risky, dangerous route 
and paying these ghastly traffickers yeah. to do it. Yeah. To do that, it's got to be the balance of economics versus risk has got to be very clear. You've got to deport people. That's the point. So the first flight that leaves with the people on it, that's when the public will go, aha, I get it, this is what's going to happen. So his commitment to do that is already there. The question is, how do you deliver that commitment? Now, we're not alone by any chance. Across Europe, lots of governments are now saying ECHR is a problem. Oh. It's not fit for oh, purpose. I mean, I mean, this issue... Italy is an absolute crisis. Over this issue could so destroy... This is not just us. This could destroy the European Union. Yep. Absolutely. As an issue. So, so anyway, it, is it, it may destroy the EU before we're brave enough to even act on it. Well, uh, the key question is, we're out of... We, we, through Brexit, we're out of the European Union, so we have no obligations on that. We have to make the decisions for ourselves. Should we leave the ECHR? Well, there are lots of mechanisms about leaving which aren't also incomplete leaving. So, for example, you've got the, 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 the legislation that Tony Blair brought through, which gives direct application to the courts. That's one of the areas you could immediately but look our at judges, stop direct application. Our judges will always go back to ECHR. Yeah, but they, they can't if they're not got direct application. That's why, one why not things. just make it simple? Well, there's one. No, I'm clarity, saying, I'm going, clarity. Why not just leave it? You could leave it. And you could rejoin tomorrow, knocking out all the areas that you don't like, because everybody else did that. Fine, way. France did. So, so there's why? lots of ways so of doing it. Isn't the truth well, of it? Isn't the truth of it that your parliamentary party overwhelmingly want to stay part of it? Well, I understand human rights is very important, and we want to uphold human rights. We were the first to do it. We still have a proud record of doing it. But we need to get the difference between human rights, saving people who are being persecuted being trafficked, etc. That's laudable, that's right. But we also have a responsibility to get control of what is a migration system being abused by the traffickers. That means we have to take the action that's necessary. There's three or four ways of doing it, but I hope tomorrow he will be clear. Well, we'll if, they, if, <coughs> if this gets overturned, we'll wait and there see. is stage two to go to, and we will take that stage. We'll wait but and see. He has to be clear about that. We'll wait and see. But I thought, for Suella given the whole pitch, given the whole political image yeah. that she gives, not to even talk about. She could have hinted, couldn't she? You'll hear more tomorrow. Didn't mention it. Very disappointed. Well, there's an old um, Teddy Roosevelt had a, a line which I've always think is important. Speak softly, but carry, carry a, big, a big, stick. big stick. And the big stick tomorrow has to be where he will. Well, we'll wait and see. Now, here we are. Party management. Never easy. You're a former party leader. I am of a smaller party. Things often go wrong at conferences. And we, know about, wrong. we know about all that. How can we be in Manchester, of all the cities in the UK, and we have a string of cabinet ministers, the prime minister, refusing to answer the question whether the extension from Birmingham to Manchester of HS2 is going ahead. This is actually clouding out the potential of any other clear messages getting through. Isn't this a complete mess? I think there was a mistake earlier on and somehow there was some suggestion, whether it came out deliberately or not, I don't know from Downing Street that this was being discussed and looked at. Yeah. It was always going to then, as we're going to match, they're going to be the big issue that's running through it. A leak, possibly? I, I think more likely the leak, because I know, if yeah. I know the Prime Minister at all, I know he likes to get this closed and sorted, then make announcements, so he won't have liked that at all. And that has, you're right, it has dominated. But I think the real issue here, I mean, I'm one of those that never thought that you would build up the North by <laughs> um, umbilically linking it again to London. To London. Yeah. What is necessary, and here's where I hope the government will go, is to say to those Northern great cities, we want you to develop as an alternative to London in many ways. And to do that, we need to invest money, more money than is going to road, rail, communications, etc. And the way to do that is if we have to stop the link, HS2, at Birmingham or wherever it happens to be, a proportion of that money that we save, significant proportion, will go to you guys to make this northern powerhouse work. And to link up Leeds link and up Liverpool Leeds, and Hull Newcastle, and all of it, actually. Well, big cities. Yeah, yeah, make yeah, them yeah, yeah. together yeah. Well, the powerhouse that competes with London and maybe becomes we'll, a destination. Now that I would I agree with that. Would work. And I think many of the mayors would run with that, too. Are we going to hear that? Well, I hope so. Uh, you know, I, I don't. I'm, I bet we don't. I'm not in. I that. bet we don't. Well, he may not make. You know, people say he's going to make an announcement about the HS2. I'd be surprised if he makes it tomorrow. Uh, because well, I, if, I tell you what. If they walk away from here, having not answered the HS2 question, then the whole conference will be a failure. Quick final thought. Any hope of winning the next election? Yeah, I actually. You know, you talked about the box pop. I've been doing a lot of <coughs> talking to. People, and, and the thing, I, the mood I'm getting out of this conference is more up than I had expected it to be. And I think one of the reasons is because Rishi Sunak's had to be very cautious and get the uh, inflation down, all the rest of it. All those targets are important. 
but a, a, a week and a half ago, he took a big decision mm -hmm. over the net zero. And it worked. And he said, I'm going to lift this from 2030, 2035, gas and all everything else, get that back, because I'm not going to have you beaten in cost terms all the way to net zero. It's too difficult at the moment, it's too expensive, we'll do it in a pace that suits you. That was a very big moment, because there'll be a lot of people around him saying, oh, don't do this. Yeah. It did two things. It begins to define who he really is. And to my point earlier on, Rishi is by and large skeptic about the idea that you can tax and spend your way out of difficulty. <clears throat> so this is very important. The second bit of it is, it brought labor to the fight. They said, we'll, re we'll reverse yeah, it. Yeah. That means now we are on ground. So clear, the Tories clear, clear blue water. So this is the point. So I, I have a real instinct about Rishi. All right, let's see. This is where he instinctively lies. Let's see. And he will deliver on it at some point.